What is up everyone? It is time to build a PC. It's been so long since I've done anything like this. I am really excited just having the parts laid out here in front of me. Um, I've been really looking forward. So I'm gonna show you guys what we've got. I'm not sure if this is gonna be several parts or just one giant video. The system is gonna be fairly unique and there are a bit of kind of strange things around the edges as always with my videos. Um, it's not quite your straightforward build, so we should have lots of fun with this one. Here are some of the bits and pieces that are going to be going into this build. Now, this isn't everything. This is just everything that we need for today. So today's goal is to try and get the platform running, just the basic motherboard CPU, fire it all up, does it work? And yes, there is a strong possibility that it will not work, and there's a good reason behind that. We'll chat about that as we go around the components individually. But first, I just want to mention that, like I often do with these sorts of projects, we've got a mixture of both used and new components here. So I like to go around the used market, having a look to see what I can get nice and cheap, and then fill in any gaps by picking up new components, or maybe buying the stuff new that you feel more comfortable with buying new. So... You can probably tell what kind of a system it's going to be just by looking at some of the parts here. We are going for a gaming system and it is going to be your more kind of budget, uh, not crazy, crazy low end, but possibly scraping the bottom of the barrel ever so slightly, um, but completely adequate performance for 1080p. And uh, yeah, it's mainly for fun anyway doing this. So this will all be completely fine. I think it's probably a good time to mention right at the beginning of the video here that not all decisions are going to be completely proper. This isn't a main machine. This is more of a fun kind of project machine. So maybe along the journey here, not, not today possibly, but later on in the video, I might make some decisions that are a little bit, ooh, kind of out there. Um, but it's more to just kind of experiment in different ways and show different things on camera and have a lot of fun with the system. So like I say, this is kind of a summer project for me. It's going to take us a number of weeks to get this completed um, because I've got limited time to do it anyway, but I'll also need to wait for funds to become available to get stuff and sort of hunt stuff down as well. All that will make sense when we get a little bit further along, but today we're keeping it simple. We're just going to try and get a working PC sat on the desk here. Okay, enough ramble. Let's chat about the components. So, the heart of the system, our CPU. This is my first ever Ryzen build, so I'm super excited about that. Um, as old viewers of my channel will know, I love the AMD stuff. My first all brand new proper PC that I built back in the day, my first gaming PC was a Phenom 2 system. So I do have a real soft spot for AMD and I knew I wanted to go AMD. This is a lovely little chip. This is the Ryzen 5 3600. Now you can probably guess this is one of the things I bought used and I got a lovely deal on this. Facebook Marketplace, 50 quid. So to give a little bit of a kind of insight as to how much of a good deal that is, if you want to get the current or at least a currently available Ryzen 5 of comparable kind of spec, you're looking at the Ryzen 5 5600 from the, the newer generation. Um, that chip is currently sold on Amazon for £120, which in itself is a fantastic deal. You're getting tons of CPU power for your money there. Um, that chip is about 12% faster than this guy on benchmarks and then negligible improvement in terms of real world performance. So scoring this for 50 quid is a huge deal. As you can just about see there on the label, this is a six core 12 thread CPU. It is no slouch and I cannot wait to give it a go. So that is our CPU and the guy that I bought it off was a super nice guy as well, just down the road. So that's really cool. Uh, next up, we'll talk about motherboard, I guess, because this is an interesting story. This motherboard is another used part, and this is also a spares and repairs piece. Now, you're probably thinking, Tom, how the heck are you going to repair a motherboard? Hopefully, I'm not. I'm kind of banking on the fact that this is actually working. Now, the eBay listing for this was really interesting. The listing basically said something along the lines of the board was working absolutely fine. And then I think their kid or something went into the settings, fiddled with something, and ever since then, the board doesn't work. So I'm kind of hoping just uh, a CMOS reset or reflashing the BIOS is gonna bring this board back to life. But that is the main reason why we're kind of uncertain as to whether this system is gonna work today. So used CPU, but we know it's working, or at least if we're taking the nice guy's word for it, it's working. Uh, but a motherboard that we knowingly bought, not functioning. And I mean, that could be the truth or it could not be the truth. The seller seemed really, really nice. so. You know, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. 
I'm pretty certain that there's no hardware flaws with this, but who knows? That is the motherboard, so all that is up in the air today. Uh, popping that back over there, that's going to be a load of fun if it doesn't work, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this one, the RAM. So this is RAM that I had lying around, and this is a good time to mention something else. And for this, I'm going to confuse everyone and bring another motherboard into the frame. This board here, a uh, little bit of an older, lower kind of... Uh, tier board, but still a nice board, the MSI A370M A Pro Max. Now this board, along with this RAM, and along with not this Ryzen CPU, but another Ryzen CPU, was donated to the channel a good two or three years ago. So Michael, if you're still watching, I've got absolutely no idea if you are, but if you are still watching, thank you so, so much for the donation. Some of these bits and pieces are finally making it into a video. And for the stuff we don't use in this video, I'll be using it for another little project down the line. So Michael donated the 16 gigs of RAM, this motherboard, and the 3200G. Now originally for this build, I was just going to use this board, and I was going to use this RAM, and yeah. But then I saw this board on eBay. It's a little bit higher end. It's still kind of middle tier, but this will let us do a little bit more. We can fiddle around with some overclocking and stuff with the B550 board, I believe. And uh, it's got four RAM slots. It's just a next kind of tier up. Plus, I've got another little plan where I can use this slightly lower end board. So that is absolutely amazing. This RAM we're going to be using today for this build, um, but this is kind of a temporary placeholder. I've got a very specific color scheme in mind for this build. So we'll be using this RAM today, but then we'll get the proper RAM and this RAM will be part of this build. Now the CPU that I got donated uh, for this lot, I sold it to fund this CPU. Now the reason being is because the CPU I want to put in this guy is lower end. The CPU was a 3200G, so a nice quite sought after APU and because they're fairly sought after for specific applications and AMD are a little bit sketchy with their lower end stuff in their APUs at the moment with the current lineup um, I got a really good price for it I got I think like 54 or 55 quid for it and then I bought that other chip for 50 so I basically swapped a Ryzen 3 for a Ryzen 5 when it comes to doing this other build, this lower end build for something very specific later on, um, we'll get a lower gen CPU again, uh, an older one and a lower end CPU, because I don't, don't need even a 3200G for the stuff I've got planned for this other build. But anyway, Michael, thank you so much. Um, we'll cover this stuff more in a future video, and possibly we might need to fiddle with the MSI motherboard today if we can't get any life out of the Gigabyte one anyway. So digging back into the pile of bits and pieces here, we've got a nice little M.2 drive. This is a crucial P3 Plus. Now this drive is exceptional value. The normal P3, which I think is a PCI Gen 3 drive, that is only about five pounds cheaper than this guy. So you only pay five pounds more for the P3 Plus. That gets you PCIe Gen 4. And this is obviously a blazing fast drive. Um, Gen 3 would be absolutely fine for me anyway. I'm not going to notice the difference. But yeah, I thought it was worth it just to get the uh, sort of bleeding edge on this one. It's not a particularly super high end drive. It's just a fantastic value. And uh, so many people are picking these up at the moment because you can't grumble a terabyte of Gen 4 PCIe NVMe storage for under 50 quid is absolutely incredible. And this is one area that is in really, really a good place right now in terms of PCs is storage. Storage has come way down in price and uh, it's really easy to get in the configurations that you want. So super chuffed to this drive. It will be the only drive going into the system. We're not gonna have any extra SSDs or hard drives or anything like that. Just that little M.2 drive, which is quite sweet. Next up, power supply. First brand new component, uh, no, sorry, this was brand new. I bought this brand new because, you know, storage, and this was brand new as well. Now, there's one kind of used market that is not that great. It's the PSU market. So I've been on eBay for the last few weeks collecting bits and pieces, and uh, I've stuck some bids on power supplies, and I've been un unsuccessful. And in most cases, the power supplies were going for way more than I'd want to pay, because you also can't really determine what kind of life they've had. So this particular power supply is not high end by any stretch of the imagination. CX is one of Corsair's lowest end power supplies, but what's really nice about these now is they do the modular, so they've got the really nice modular cables for these, 
and uh, this one is RGB, which is cool. This build will contain RGB, just a warning for you guys. And uh, they do it in white as well, and white will be part of the color scheme of this build. I'm not gonna say too much about that because I wanna save it for a surprise later. But yeah, this PSU looked the part, and I put a bid on a couple of other white PSUs for, um, well, just trying to get one really, see, to see if I could get any kind of white PSU that fit the build, uh, but no. This always ended up cheaper and it's only a 550 watt but that'll be completely fine we've got just this one gpu and it's not super high end not super power hungry so that'll be completely fine for us and uh yeah corsair brand new quality you get the warranty it's just worth it so used PSU was not happening this time around. The final piece of the puzzle for this build is the graphics card. Now, this is quite a nice looking card, actually. This is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. This particular one is an MSI Armor OC card, so a nice variant, and it caught my eye because it has white accents. It's got a little bit of detailing, bit of white on the back as well, so it fit the color scheme. And a 1660 Ti is a really good buy right now. I did want an AMD card. Obviously, this was used on eBay. Um, AMD card would have been really nice, but just no nice deals. I was bidding up on a couple of cards, but nothing was really ticking the box. But this one, this was a nice little deal. I ended up paying, I'll put whatever it was on the screen right now. I don't think it was much over 100 quid for the 1660 Ti. So, um, a super super cheap platform here really cheap build overall i've not spent a lot of money for the performance i'll get out of this whatsoever it's probably good to mention what kind of games we'll, we'll be playing as well i'm going to be putting this pc in the living room so we're going to transfer all of jess's sim stuff over to it it's currently on her laptop and her laptop is just crawling to a complete and utter slouch now so um we're going to offload all the sim stuff, give her some more space on her laptop, and all the sim stuff is going to happen on this computer. She's got Sims 4 and also Sims 3, um, and loads of expansion packs and stuff packs and God knows what else. So that's all going to go on here. We also both want to play Hogwarts Legacies, Legacy, Legacies, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, we're probably going to do that on this system. And there's a couple of other games that we want to play as well. So yeah, putting this build together for more of a kind of casual gaming build. So I think a 1660 Ti is perfect. And uh, 1080p, of course, we're not going to be going any higher than 1080p. I do have a 4K TV now, but uh, I've got a receiver that's only capable of 1080p. So that is absolutely fine. Let's just dig out the board and have a little look. Now I've already given it the kind of preliminary inspection and things are looking good. We've got a couple of SATA cables. We've got the installation guide. We've also got the board. Now when it arrived, um, it had a screw loose and I believe there's a screw, yeah, there's a screw looking in the bottom of the box as well. Um, the, the mounting hardware was basically had fallen off. Uh, it wasn't tightened properly before it was sent. I'm hoping that's not a bad sign. Put the SATA cables back in there because we don't need those either. So the system is going to be built and is going to essentially live on this box for the next little while. So here's the board. It's a nice M80X board. I'll give you guys a better close-up, I think. So there we go. As you can see, the board is looking kind of neat and tidy. There's a little bit of dust. You can tell it's used. Um, you can mainly spot that on the top of the PCIe slots and stuff. But overall, it's not like caked with dust. It's looking in pretty good condition. So I am more than happy to give this a whirl. There's the back IO. Of course, you get the um, display out on these AMD boards, but there's no integrated video in this CPU, so they won't do anything. Four RAM slots, which is quite nice on an M80X board. The other one has got two RAM slots on the lower end ones often, but uh, four RAM slots, so you've got room for future expansion there. We've got two M.2 slots. We've got two full length PCIe slots. The top one is X16, and we've got a little 1X in the middle there. A few SATA ports. What I really wanna do right now is just get everything in to the system um, to see if it works, because I am so, so eager to see if it posts at all, if it even powers up. Because uh, if it doesn't, we'll have to go back to the drawing board. So here's our CPU. Let's be a little bit careful. So again, another used part. There it is, Ryzen 3600. Let's bung this straight in the socket. 
I'm not hanging around today, folks. There's plenty of time for talking later on. Okay, I need to look at this CPU with a magnifying glass because I think I can see a bent pin on it, which I didn't pick up on when I purchased it. Let's have a little look. Okay, man, wow. Uh, just having a little look at it here, and yeah, it's actually fine. It was a trick of the light, so thank God for that. Yeah, the guy that got this off, he was um, he, he was really, really nice, genuine guy, just upgrading his PC, so that's all good. Hopefully putting this CPU in to stay in. I don't want to be taking it out and putting it in the other board. I want it to live in this board. There we go. That's that clamp down. Now, the cooler in here is not used at all. It's completely brand new. The guy that I got this from used a different cooler. We will also be using a different cooler, but for now we need to pop this cooler on the chip. So we've got our untouched pre-applied thermal compound, which is quite handy. So let's quickly remove the stock mounting hardware. <laughs> Actually looks really nice on there. I, I'm a big fan of the design of this cooler. Last time I did an AMD build, um, Ryzen didn't exist. So the cooler that um, was around at the time was just the horrible square ones that look so ancient by today's standards. Yeah, I like it. So you can't over tighten it because the screws just stop. And uh, it's quite a chunky thing, isn't it? Lovely, lovely stuff. Let's plug that in top corner there. So that's our cooler installed. CPU is in. Let's move on to our RAM. Now I did check in advance. To get dual channel we are going into the grey slots. This is DDR4 3000. We'll pick up some 3200 uh, for this build but this will be absolutely fine for now. You probably wouldn't notice any difference to be honest but we're getting different RAM anyway because uh, this RAM will be going into a different system. So there's our memory, 16 gigs, and we may as well put in the drive because even though we just want to check that it works, and that is the main thing, if we do get lucky and it does post and it does work and everything's looking okay, we can install Windows. So we may as well put a drive in the system. Ah oh, man, crazy, absolutely crazy. I haven't handled these very much because uh, I don't really do stuff with modern builds very often. Um, so just to have a terabyte in your hand like that is amazing. Lovely. And our handy included screw, because there's no screw, there's a screw there on this one, but there's no screw on that one on this board, so that could be missing. But we got one with the drive anyway, so that's good. And that is our drive in. Okay, so the board is prepped. Uh, we do need the video card, but we'll put that in later, just in case we accidentally bash it. That's gonna be quite delicate um, sitting there, so that's fine. I'm gonna have a bit of a clear up and then we'll dig into the power supply. Okay, let's unbox the power supply. Now, I've already taken off the plastic wrapper on the box. It was one of those situations where they put the courier address label straight on the plastic wrap, which I absolutely hate. Should always come in a separate box, in my opinion. Hey, that's pretty cool. Power play. I like that. Okay, so we have got our UK power cable. All of our lovely white modular cables, they match the build very well. You can see you've got these flattish type ones for all the accessories, and then your main 24 pin is one of these nice snake looking ones. We've got some cable ties, very nice, and included screws. They could cut a corner and not include cable ties with the cheaper model, so hats off Corsair. Nice chunky paper documentation. Some of that stuff. And here is the power supply. It is looking nice, really nice. Not everyone's into white builds. Uh, I'm not typically into your kind of standard, just ice white build. Um, but I've done so many black systems over the years and I've got a really cool accompanying color with the white. I just think it's gonna look sick. I got a case in mind and yeah, everything is gonna look so nice. So there we have it, the little CX550F RGB power supply. You cannot go wrong, you really can't. These are about 70 quid, give or take. Um, power supplies are in a really interesting position at the moment. They're kind of pricey. 
they really are. Um, but yeah, this is this is a good deal. You got an RGB button on the back here. I guess that cycles through the built-in patterns, or you can uh, plug it in and control it. So we'll try and do some of that as well. First build with proper RGB, by the way, folks. Last time I built a PC. You couldn't even put half of this stuff in the system, so that's how long it has been. Right then, let's have a look at our cables. Your fancier PSUs will come with a nice bag with all the cables in. This one just comes with a plastic bag and that is completely fine by me. I do not want to pay extra for velvet bags. Okay, so we are only gonna need, let's have a little look. We don't need any SATA. What's that? SATA again, we do not need. That is a 6 plus 2 PCIe, we're going to need that. Not going to need Molex. That is our 8-pin CPU, I want to say. And here we have our 24-pin. And that's our little RGB cable, which is quite cool. Once we get all these guys plugged in, we'll kind of swap places. We'll bring the motherboard further forward. And we'll put the PSU right at the back of the desk. I've already got a handy power cable waiting back there for it. Nice. Very, very nice, sturdy, sturdy feeling connections. Interesting thing to note about this power supply, being a 550, is you can't really put another GPU in the system here properly. Um, you've got two 8-pin connections here, PCIe slash CPU. So once you plug in your PCIe power cable for your graphics card, um, and you plug in the CPU cable, that is it. You could do sketchy Molex adapters and stuff, obviously, but this is definitely geared towards a single GPU system, even though most systems are these days, given the state of multi-GPUs. Ah, okay, this one has two different ends, so that's pretty cool. This is the PSU end, this is the CPU end. That can be split into a four pin, I presume, if necessary. Lovely, so that is our PSU wired up, and that's how it's going to be in our system as well, apart from we will have the RGB cable connected. I don't think we'll need any Molex or... Oh, possibly actually, yeah, we will. We will. I tell a lie, we will. <laughs> oh man, okay, here we go. Here's the motherboard. And here's the PSU. Let's start wiring her up. Now, I'm not going to plug my power cable in yet for obvious reasons. Let's get everything plugged in first. So let's start with our chunky monkey 24 pin. Okay, she's in. This is CPU. Labels are fantastic on here. That's the CPU in. And now all we need is our GPU. Now this is where we've got to start being careful. Um, I don't want to bash this and suddenly break the GPU out of the slot. So let's just be really careful. Here's our nice MSI 1660 Ti. Clunk, we are in. And this card has an 8 pin. Okay, cool. Oh, actually, guys, sorry. Uh, what I said a minute ago was incorrect. You have got on each two 6 plus 2s. So that's actually really cool. Um, you could run two cards or one card with two connectors. That is fine. So that actually gives a bit more flexibility than I originally thought was here. Uh, we'll plug this one in. Plus two, okay, I hate how wibbly this is outside of a case, but that's the best we can do for now. There we go. I know it's used hardware and not the highest end stuff, but uh, yeah, I still feel uncomfortable messing any of it up. I've got my little monitor here. I uh, can't find the stand for it, so it's sat on the desk. I think we'll move the whole system over. That way we can get enough room for a keyboard and mouse. Obviously turning my PSU round would be a good idea so that it gets some ventilation, not just having the fan sat right on the desk. Power switch is off on the back. Let's plug the power in. So we're coming HDMI to DVI adapter out of the GPU. Let's turn the monitor on. Wow, okay, this is like moment of truth coming up here, folks. <laughs> and just in case, this might be a little bit uh, wishful thinking sort of stuff, but let's get a keyboard and mouse, by the way. Do not look at this keyboard. This is an absolute dumpster dive of a keyboard. Filthy on every level, but it was free. And we have it here today. And it's a PS2 keyboard, so 
That's fun. Let's get our little mouse. Okay, that HP keyboard lasted all of five seconds. It was absolutely filthy. I've only ever seen it under low light conditions. And now that I've got the filming lights on behind me for this video, I can see just how disgusting it is. So yeah, I've chucked it under the desk. Uh, the only other keyboard I've got in the room here is this Apple one. It's gonna have to do for now. Uh, so yeah, keyboard, mouse, monitor. Man, I am pretty nervous to see if this is gonna fire up. I've had this hardware sitting here for quite a while, so. Let's see what it does. It's gonna be very interesting. I'm past the point of no return for returns on any of these items, really. Um, I just hope it works. I'm glad we're running a brand new PSU because we know that unless we've got a dead on arrival PSU, we are good for power. What could possibly go wrong? Let's flip the switch. Okay, no signs of life at all, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, we haven't pressed the power button yet. I was just ex expecting maybe a little. LED somewhere or something, I don't know. Okay, got a screwdriver. <gasps> Woo! System is on. Oh man. Anything for the monitor. Okay, no display, that is fine. That is completely fine. So we've got power. That is a really good thing. That is a really, really good thing, guys. Um, GPU fans are spinning, so that looks good. We've got CPU fan spinning. That looks good as well. The camera refresh rate is doing some weird things. Uh, these fans are spinning a lot quicker than they appear on the camera. It's just doing like a match of frame rate at a you know lower refresh type thing. So that's fine. Power supply obviously is running. That looks really cool. Uh, no video. So that's fine. That is completely fine. Uh, let's start diagnosing this thing. So interestingly, the fans have stopped spinning on the GPU, but that's not something that I'm worried about. Uh, the fan is also spinning quite slowly on the CPU. It ramped down uh, after we turned the system on. So that's actually a really good sign. I'm presuming that this PC is still somewhat alive. So let's turn that off. Uh, on this motherboard, we've got a clear CMOS jumper right here on the board. So hopefully you guys can see that, those two pins. So if we just bridge those two pins for a few seconds, if we can't get it to work, then I will refer back to the manual, but let's just bridge. Sorry about the camera work here, guys. Let's bridge that for a short while, a few seconds or so. There we go, that should do the trick. Okay, now that we've done that, let's power the system back on and see if she does anything. Okay, so she spun up again. Do we get anything on screen? Okay, same symptoms again. I'm gonna double check cabling to my monitor just to be 100% certain, and then we'll go to the next step. Monitor is absolutely fine, so that's all good. We know that is fine. Let's turn the system off again. Now, another thing we're gonna do before going to extreme measures is we're just gonna swap the CMOS battery here. We're gonna swap it out for a brand new one will probably make absolutely no difference whatsoever, but we'll just do it as a troubleshooting step. Got a brand new sealed battery right here. Put that back in. Ping, let's see if we get anything now. Very much doubt it. Okay, absolutely nothing, so that is fine. Now we are gonna go to our final attempt. Um, our final attempt, actually, I'm going to move my GPU first. I'm just going to do that, and then we will try flashing the BIOS. Okay, so I'm just going to move my GPU into this slot. Uh, this is absolutely the slot it's meant to be in, the full speed GPU dedicated slot. I'm just going to move it um, just by way of a troubleshooting technique, and then we will do the BIOS. Sometimes doing funky little stuff like that can just breathe life into the system. Uh, not all the time though. And certainly it's just a shot in the dark really, but we'll just try this. Cause obviously we don't know if this GPU actually works either. That's the other thing to keep in mind. No, no display on that monitor at all. So let's, uh, let's do it. Let's move the GPU back first of all. What we're gonna do now is reflash the BIOS. And 
I thought we'd have to do this, so I prepared this way in advance. On this drive, this is a USB 2 flash drive. All we have is the BIOS file for this board. And there's a specific port to plug it into on the back of the board. This one right here, the white one, this is for QFlash, which is the gigabyte utility to flash the BIOS. Now, how you do it, I've got absolutely no idea, but we're just gonna wing it. So if I mess it up, then we'll do the research. It really should be something that you don't wing because uh, this is a process that you really should not screw up. But I'm gonna kind of use my uh, instincts here because we have a Q flash button on the board. I'm just gonna hold it down, um, give the system power, hold it down. Whether you do that when the system is powered on or off, I don't know, but I'm gonna try it just with power first. And we'll hold down the button and see what happens. Hold it down for a few seconds. Okay, it's reading the flash drive. It actually read the flash drive there. I saw it blinking. I don't know if you guys caught that on camera. So that's pretty insane. Uh, I don't know if there's meant to be an LED in this drive, but it seeked activity from the USB drive. So that is kind of fascinating. Um, what do we do now? I've got no clue. <laughs> Let's boot the system. Okay, so we've still got no video. Oh guys, I had completely the wrong file on there. Like it wasn't even close. Um, I don't know what I was doing the other night. I wanted to get all prepared for this video, uh, but it looks like I just downloaded completely the wrong BIOS version. Where the hell was I on the Gigabyte website? I do not know. So I really hope I haven't bricked it. Oh, always double check in the daytime, guys, not in the middle of the night. So let's, uh, let's try this again. Power the power supply on, and this time uh, we should see some proper activity. Yes. It's doing it. It's doing it. Please say you're doing it. Was that different? I don't know if you can see the activity light on camera. I hope you can. Uh, but it flashed certainly differently that time. Oh, God. Kid with a chemistry set syndrome kicking in. What are you going to do now, computer? Okay, absolutely nothing. That's fine. What I'm thinking now is, if we don't get joy with this version, sometimes we've got to update to, if it's a very old version on here, we'll have to update to another incremental update before updating to the latest version. So we'll check that, on, that out on the site in a minute. Oh man. Okay, so sort of interesting, the BIOS that I was trying to flash uh, it's a very, very new one. It's only just come out, just a matter of a couple of weeks ago. So I've stepped back a couple of versions. I'm gonna try and install an older one. And we'll see if that helps. Okay, let's press this button again. Okay, so. I've now done my research and I didn't rename the file. It should be gigabyte.bin and not the default file name. So I'm gonna hold down this button. I also found out something else extremely interesting whilst I was doing this. Um, <laughs> there it goes. It's flashing away there. It's still reading. There we go. It is continuously reading that now, folks. That is what we want. I hope you can see that. There we go. Activity on the USB drive. I also did read that potentially I have to remove everything. Processor, RAM, GPU. We will see about that. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It's hard to kind of find a concrete answer because there's just so many things. Um, so many contrasting bits of information, but we will find out. There's, there's not much about QFlash in the actual manual for the motherboard. Um, and then not much on the site either. A lot of the info is if you've already got your system running, uh, what do you do then? But yeah, that, that stick is flashing like mad there. I'm not sure how long this is gonna take. I also read, oh yeah, great. It's powered up the system. This is good. This, this appears like it's actually doing it because I was just about to say as well, I actually read that it should power up the system on its own and then power down the system completely um, when it's done, so 
we shall see. It looks like it's doing it, so that's really good. Yeah, just rename the file gigabyte in capitals, gigabyte.bin, because it comes named as the the BIOS version uh, or the motherboard name dot BIOS version. So yeah, this is full on doing it. USB sticks flashing like crazy, fans are spinning. Oh, okay. Finally, feel like we've got some progress. Well, I say finally, we've only been doing this sort of half an hour, 40 minutes, but um, yeah, I'm keeping the camera rolling in case anything exciting happens. Ooh, we've got an LED on the board. Let's see. I didn't notice that earlier. That's the LED I was talking about. Okay, so it's not in the button, it's next to the button, but that shows that it's working, I think. While this is doing its thing, I just want to remind you guys that if this works, then I have got an 89.99 motherboard for essentially half price. Uh, so that is awesome. 42 pound motherboard and 50 quid CPU. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so we waited, the system did not shut down, so we're gonna try and boot it up, power on, and let's fire her up. And we should just get a normal post now if everything has worked. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> Reboot and select proper boot device. Yes. Oh man. Score. And this is the latest version as well. I told you guys that I tried that older version, but I tried the file rename with the new version. Check it out. Okay, closer angle needed. BIOS has been reset. Please reconfigure your BIOS setup items if needed. Oh, that is such a sweet sign. That is such a sweet sign. We've got a working system. Holy cow. <laughs> so CPU frequency, uh, 3.6 gigahertz. That is correct. It's running about 42 degrees C. Memory frequency, just a little low, so we'll have a look at that now. System temp, good, good, good. Okay, F2. Ah, this is so good. I don't even care about anything from this point forward now that this is working. This is like the, the main thing. Oh man, look, look at this. Look at this beautiful, brand new, gorgeous BIOS that we've downloaded from the web and it worked. <laughs> XMP. Profile one. Before we fiddle with anything else, let's just see if we get our um, 3000 megahertz memory running with that XMP profile. A memory frequency, 3000 megahertz. Lovely stuff. Um, do you know, I'm actually gonna face the camera for this little statement. With eBay kind of for parts are not working or spares and repairs listings or whatever, I always find that, and this has been kind of across all the tech hobbies, you know, broken games, consoles, PC stuff, uh, electronics, whatever. If you see something that you, you spot the listing and you're like, oh, that's an easy fix, I can fix that. Yeah, I can fix that. Oh, I know what's wrong with that, I can fix that. Eight million other people know how to do that as well and they're all bidding on it and you don't end up getting that much of a good deal. I'm sure that's happened to you guys as well. It's happened to me time and time again. You see a listing, it's got three or four days left on the auction and you're like, I can grab a deal here, I can fix that. With this board, um, it went for half the price, you know? So there were still active bidders, but it went for, you know, the, the 42 quid or whatever. I should have rechecked really before recording this. I'll keep putting it up on the screen. Um, it went for the, for the price it went for anyway. And uh, I'm actually going to check because I'm doubting myself now. What did you go for? Okay, 45 quid. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I wasn't that far off. So yeah, pretty much exactly half then. Um, I guess what it was with this is you were taking a couple of risks. You were taking the risk of, do I trust the seller? Um... So that was something. I took that risk and I was like, yeah, I trust this seller. You can always kind of tell from the write-ups or sometimes tell anyway, uh, not always, but uh, the write-up looked good and the communication was fantastic after purchase, but of course that was after I'd risked the bidding anyway. Um, so do you trust the seller? Yeah, okay, I trust the seller. Then you've got to trust the motherboard. Has it spontaneously just exploded and is not gonna work? Was the child pressing buttons on it a coincidence or was that actually the cause of the problem? So you've got a couple of different variables there and I guess just 
people didn't want to take that much of a risk because really this board would have been a good deal all the way up to 65, 70 pounds, you know, even saving 20 quid on the board for that BIOS flash. I mean, if I'd have researched how to do that properly, I could have done that in 10, 15 minutes as opposed to doing it in half an hour. Um, it was my fault and I took a risk there. I could have bricked the board by doing that process incorrectly. So do not do that, obviously, research it. But when I'm making videos and I'm doing this stuff here on the, on the desk, it's it's got that like entertainment value as well, okay? So having me flailing about is, is fun, it's amusing. So uh, for you guys at home, if you're not doing this for anybody else's amusement, then by all means, just read the documentation properly. But yeah, it all came out of the wash and we've got a working computer, so wow. Okay, yeah, so we can overclock with this board. Um, there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff to boggle around with later on. Um, for now, what I'm gonna do is uh, get my Windows install USB. Okay, I've plugged that into the board and uh, it should boot from it. So it's Windows 10. I am gonna try and update to Windows 11. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm not entirely sure how that's actually gonna work with my version of Windows here, but we'll see. Here we go. So it's booted into my USB stick. It's Windows 10 64-bit. We've got English, United Kingdom, United Kingdom, all detected. Um, oh, I forgot to check if it detected the drive, but <laughs> we'll soon find out. Did you guys notice if it de detected the drive? I did not. What should we do? Windows 10 Education, Windows 10 Pro? Yeah, we're gonna need to suss out a product key later on anyway. Cough, cough. Let's go to advanced. There we go, there's our drive. <laughs> Man, 931.5 gigs. Let's get Windows on this thing. This should be blazing quick. It's quite a fast USB 3 drive. It's in a USB 3 port and we're going on to a blazing fast SSD. So yeah, it's already cranking out a nice percentage there. Uh, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy this absolute dream of a computer that it's now uh, functioning. I still can't quite believe it. Nice thing to mention as well is we've got our zero dB mode on the video card working absolutely flawlessly there. So the fans switch off completely, which is good. And obviously guys, another huge strength, it's not just the motherboard, but another massive positive thing is this GPU is at least working well enough to give us an image. So once we've got Windows on here, we can load up something more demanding, put, um, put a bit of a load on the GPU, put a load on the CPU and see if all of this stuff is stable. But yeah, we've got no signs of any GPU issues at the moment. So another eBay risk paid off. The card was sold as working, so it's not, uh, not a huge risk, but there is always that iffy moment, isn't there, especially with GPUs. So uh, I'm glad that we've got an image out of the GPU. In the time it took me to say that, the system has rebooted. I very, very much doubt that Windows has installed already. It's quite amusing doing this process on this nice, fast, relatively modern hardware. I was reinstalling Windows 10 for a friend of mine on quite an ancient low-end laptop um, just a few days ago, and it was slugging away even after I put an SSD in it. Um, so this is like breath of fresh air really. In the time it uh, took me to speak about that GPU and to speak about eBay, the thing is done really. And we are in United Kingdom. I haven't connected the network uh, on purpose because I'm hoping that if we can't get network up and running, we can skip some of the uh, more tedious parts of the setup here. We have made it. Okay, let's have a little look. CPU, AMD Ryzen 5 3600, six core processor. Got our 16 gigs of RAM running at 3000 megahertz. Lovely. So Windows is on the machine. Let's plug in the network cable. Where are you network cable? I'm trying to be careful with the open motherboard here. Now that I know that it's working as well. Uh, things are gonna get pretty crazy now, I think, because all my drivers and stuff are gonna be downloading in the background. Windows updates. Okay, it's downloading loads of security stuff. All sorts of stuff. Once it's done all that, I wonder if we can jump up to Windows 11. All right, guys. So it's a few days later and I've installed GTA. I don't know why I 
pick GTA, and I also don't know why I didn't transfer it from my previous PC because I forgot that it was uh, like over 100 gigs. So yeah, a couple of days worth of downloading on and off there. Um, but yeah, this machine is running beautifully. Now, obviously this monitor is not the highest resolution monitor. This is 1680 by 1050 and it's a 60 hertz display, but we've got everything cranked to very high and the PC is not even breaking out of sweat. The GPU fans aren't even spinning, which is awesome. Um, I've got no idea where I'm going, by the way. I've literally just been playing this for 10 minutes or so. Oh, there we go. We had one spin up from the GPU fans. It kind of does that. It has one blast every now and again. Um, but then there's no, no spinning fans at all. Oh, God. What a lovely little system. I am chuffed to bits. I'm so, so happy. It's been without any hiccups. Everything has been super smooth, super quick. Man, it is responsive using this, this machine. Um, yeah, it's going to be really nice. <laughs> Okay, so I need to order a case. Uh, I'll get that arranged relatively soon. So components wise, what we've got left to order is a case and the actual RAM I'm going to use. The RAM that matches the colour scheme and will pick up slightly faster RAM as well. That frees up this RAM to use in the other build that I'm going to do in the future with the uh, MSI motherboard. So that's all good. Um, not that there's any problem with this RAM at all, you know, I, I would be more than happy with this. I'm not even going to notice a difference, but still, I need RAM for the other system, so it'll all be good. We'll get some case, we'll get some RAM, and we'll build this into the case, and then we'll get a sense of where we actually are for the uh, next stages that I'm sure you've kind of guessed what we're going to do with that. So, yeah, it's going to be a few agonizing days wait for me, but um, pretty snappy for you guys. Let's get this thing in the case, I guess. After a week or so, I have tracked down a case. Now, <laughs> as you can see, the box is looking a little bit rough around the edges. I took another risk. Um, I decided to go for one of those eBay auctions where it was sort of open box, seller with some slightly questionable feedback, a little bit of a dodgy listing. Um, but the, the case arrived really quickly. I ordered it one day and then it arrived the next day. So really, really quick, just as quick as if I'd have ordered it on Amazon Prime. I didn't get a huge saving on this, um, but it was a substantial enough saving to be kind of worth the risk. So let's check it out. As you can see, the box is sort of wet. Um, it's actually completely dry to the touch, so it more looks like something has kind of leaked on it or something, um, which is a bit of a shame because it makes it a little bit awkward for resale with the box looking in this state. Uh, but it is what it is and yeah, we care about the case and not the box so much. So that's absolutely fine. Just quickly as well, the actual case that we've chosen is the Fractal Design Pop Mini Air, which is a really nice MATX case. Um, there's a few more nice MATX choices out there now and this is one of them. You get quite a lot in a small package here and the design is really nice as well. This is the white one. So let's dig in and hopefully, fingers crossed, the case itself is okay. So we've got some good signs here in the top of the box. We've got um, the user guide, which is still here. And what is that? Oh, that's the fan filter from the top of the case. So that's come off, but that's absolutely fine. It's just one of those magnetic ones. So there is the documentation. Case is wrapped up in its little bag. So let's flip this upside down and Hopefully everything's okay. Well, the outside condition of the box was pretty horrible, but inside everything looks absolutely fine. Um, there's not even any real kind of discoloration on the polystyrene or anything. So it looks like that liquid, whatever it was, has not soaked through. Very good news. Um, case is wrapped up in its little bag. Let's continue to unbox it. Okay, wow. Something that strikes me immediately is there's no peel thing on the glass. Um, in case it looks really clean, looks in really good condition. I'm gonna have a closer inspection, but it may be worth me messaging the seller because it was listed as new open box and it is not screaming new at the moment. I'll say one thing though, it is an absolutely gorgeous looking case. We've still got our little bit of protective tape along here which is fine. Uh, accessories, they look okay to me. Yeah, everything actually looks looks fine. It does look brand new. Let's flip around to the other side and just have a quick look back here. It's actually a real treat for me to have such a modern case. 
even just new little features like captive thumb screws are a real treat because they just stay there you don't have to worry about them there we go there's the back side yeah everything's looking lovely still got protective tape on there here's all our cabling it's going to be really interesting trying to pull off some of the things that i want to do in here um looking at the space it's going to be interesting but a very fun challenge definitely um, one super cool thing that I have to point out about this case right away is there is in fact a five and a quarter inch bay, which is just kind of insanity um, in a small case in this day and age. It's a relatively modern case. I believe it released last year or the year before. Um, so yeah, there's a five and a quarter in the front there that you can just about see. I'll give you a better look at the case um, later on when we build in it. But there's also this kind of handy drawer, which is just, again, pretty crazy and you can put another can you put another five and a quarter yeah so if you were to remove this hard drive cage inside you could put two five and a quarter inch drives in there or keep the hard drive cage in you could have a smaller five and a quarter inch accessory there or just this drawer <laughs> and then you get this this door covering it all um i would absolutely love to put an optical drive in here you know that's nasty got to watch out for that tiny tiny little one i would really really love to just because it's me and I like optical drives, but I know that I'm gonna have to remove, uh, if this cage removes, I hope it does, I'm gonna have to remove that, definitely this, and potentially this, um, to kind of fit in everything that I wanna fit in. <laughs> yeah, looking at it now, I don't know if all my fans are gonna work, but we'll soon find out. Just bringing you around for a little kind of handheld look. We've got the nice, Magnetic dust filter on the top. Space for dual 120 or single 140 up here. A nice oversized vent, so lots of airflow through there. This is the airflow version. They do a silent version as well. There's the front. There's nice detailing on there. Nice kind of texture. Two included 120 mil fans. One included in the back. It's just a really, really sweet little compact case. Uh, it's actually a little bigger than I was anticipating, which is hilarious because it looks smaller in regards to the kind of plans that I have for it, but it looks bigger in terms of footprint on the desk. It's a fairly wide case. As you can see, there's generous width there, which is good because A, there's plenty of space behind the motherboard tray, and B, there is tons of space in the front here for really tall CPU coolers or chunky graphics cards. Look at the space between where the PCI slots end and the side of the case kicks in. That's just bonkers. It's just loads of room in here. And similarly to most PC cases these days, uh, it's not something that I'm really used to seeing. Again, I don't do a lot of builds, haven't done a build in a long time. So for me to see cases that aren't full of bays at the front, um, it's kind of strange, because last time I was buying cases, you would still get your five and a quarters at the top and then your three and a halfs underneath. This new design where they kind of stick all that stuff underneath in the basement area is really cool, uh, because in those older cases, the space to the right of the power supply was pretty much always redundant, unless you had a case that had a hard drive mount there. So to just shelve over all of this and give you all this kind of under the hood space under here is, um, is definitely a bonus. And it makes for a clean build as well. Although I do like seeing the power supply, so I'm glad this vent is here because I'll probably have my power supply fan up. Um, not that I'm the biggest fan of fan up, but it is a RGB fan as well, so we'll get some glow through there. Let's just base the whole build around looks. <laughs> um, on the top, we've got our ports. USB-C is optional on this case. I won't need it anyway. Yeah, sweet, chuffed, and happy that I saved some money. And again, eBay has uh, worked out well for me this time. So that is good. In terms of where we're at with the timeline, I've still got the system on the bench there. Um, I've been playing around with it and I'm absolutely in love with it. It may not be the most powerful system in the world, but to me it is very, very capable and I really do love it. So I can't wait to cram it into this case. I need to rejiggle everything around because I think I want to build on this desk um, for you guys, because if I, if I build on here, then I won't be able to actually use my um, computer to do anything else. So yes, I better make some room and we'll build on this desk, uh, but for today, I do not have time to start the build. I just wanted to check out the case, make sure everything was okay. Oh man, this is gonna be so nice. I simply can't resist the urge to start building. So it is Sunday night, 
very, very late, but I'm going to use this opportunity to get at least the core components into the case. So let's dismantle this little desktop test bench we've got going here and hopefully make a successful transfer of these core components into the lovely new case. Here we go. We now have an actual case on the desk, finally. That is looking absolutely lovely. So what I'm gonna do first of all, just to get it out of the way, I'm actually gonna put the PSU in. It'll give the case a bit of weight at the bottom as well. And I've got all the cables dangling out of the power supply. I didn't feel the need to unplug them. So let's slot in the power supply fan side up. To get this in, it looks like we've got to remove this hard drive uh, or SSD mount, I should say. And I think we'll actually keep that off because we don't need to put SSDs there. Okay, nice. We're lining up well on the back. So another little note on the fan side up situation. I could just pretend that I've got loads of good reasons for choosing fan side up, but honesty is the best policy. And even though I could give a load of reasons, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm doing it for looks. And that is the only reason. And the looks uh, in this scenario are the RGB elements of the power supply fan shining through inside the case out of the fan grill, which I think is going to look really nice. If I put the fan facing down, there might be some underglow, but once it gets through the filter um, and yeah, the case hasn't got a, a big gap at the bottom anyway, there probably be, won't be that much of a beneficial lighting effect. I'm not at all concerned about the airflow, uh, especially once you guys see the extremely overcool cooling that I'm going to put in. Over overcool, overkill cooling. You'll have to bear with me. It is, uh, as I say, the middle of the night. Would I rather wait for a sensible time and be a little bit more precise with my talking on camera? I would not because I want to get this thing built and I'm sure you guys want to see it too. Plus there's actually something kind of special about tinkering with this stuff when everybody else is asleep. It's not great clearance on that fourth screw, so I'm just going to back everything else off and we'll try and slide it over ever so slightly. There we go. That is perfect. Looking very nice. I'm glad I went with the white power supply. Um, even though people don't regularly see the back of the system, it really helps. And also having a little look inside, it just, it's white, so it continues the theme perfectly. If it was much more expensive to get the white version, I may not have done it. Um, but from the testing and stuff that I've done on the bench here, this power supply has been absolutely lovely so far. So I really am pleased that I went for a new power supply. There's really nice touches everywhere with this case. Obviously, taking this bracket off, you want to keep this safe for the future if you ever want to add SSDs. And the thumb screw is captive on this as well, so you just can't lose it. You'd have to lose this entire piece. So I'm just really impressed with that sort of thing. It's no budget case by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it's still not an expensive case. It's sort of middle of the road and it's just lovely quality. It's absolutely solid as well. So next up, I wanna take this hard drive cage out. I probably should have done that before attaching the power supply. Um, how are we gonna do this, guys? Let's have a little look. Okay, so we can see a thumb screw here, and this appears to be the only screw holding the cage in because it sort of slots into place. Again, captive, and look at that. We can just, oh wow, that's really cool. They're two separate cages. That's awesome, so you can choose to keep either one or the other in. That's really cool. So let's, aha, yeah, check that out. Let's undo this one and pull out the bottom cage. Ah, oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. So there's the two hard drive cages. If you think about the bays, it is flipping impressive. You're not sacrificing anything by losing the traditional bay design at the front. You gain all that space at the front for a radiator or whatever, or a really long graphics card, but you still retain two five and a quarters, two three and a halves, two two and a halves, and you've got your M.2 these days. So. The expansion is incredible in such a small space. Um, 
yeah, I think the next, next little segment of this video is just going to be me being continuously impressed by this case. Um, but that's a good thing because I do think it's a nice case. Okay, so we're going to flip it around because I think we can just go for the motherboard. We can just stick it right in. Yeah, man, look at that. Look how clean that is. Lovely little power supply fan there. That is going to glow beautifully under here. Um, I'm hoping with the ideas I have for fans and cooling and the power supply fan here, I'm kind of hoping to get away with not needing any RGB LED strips or additional lighting in any way. I think everything that we're putting into the system will contribute enough to the lighting. I'm really hoping so anyway. Um, that's a cool benefit. I like that a lot. Now looking at what we've got going here, um, if I was putting in an all-in-one liquid cooler or something, I would probably be inclined to put the radiator in first up here. Um, but we're going to put the board in straight away. And we may end up taking the board back out in the future, but the fact is, I have not got all the components that I need yet for this build. So what I need to do is get the build up and running in the case um, with air cooling and then we need to go from there basically, we need to make a plan. So if I end up disassembling the machine ever so slightly, that's not such a bad thing, but we need to get it together first to make a plan. And uh, in that sentence alone, I just gave away the biggest secret of this build. You heard me correct. We are going to be water cooling this system uh, as crazy as it sounds for the specs. We're going to do it for fun. It's going to look awesome. It's going to be a really, really fun thing to do on camera. So yeah, we're going to do a custom water cooling loop in this machine in the white and pink theme, <laughs> which you probably already know from the thumbnail and uh, various other giveaways on the video. But hey, I kept the suspense up for this long. Okay, I found the first problem with the eBay purchased case, while well, the second problem if you include the no protective film on the glass panel. Um, I just went to get the motherboard screws and check this out. We've got packets of screws here that came with the case. This one has been opened and this one has been torn and opened and the contents has not been replaced. So these are the sealed bags that come with the case. Let's have a quick look what else we've got. Ah, okay. This is what's happened, guys. This is what's happened. These are some other screws. And look, everything else that came out of those bags is in the bottom of this bag. So a little bit inconvenient because it's all muddled up. However, if it's all there, then I can't grumble too much. And for the money that I saved, that is absolutely fine. So I'm going to figure out what screws we need to get this motherboard in. And then we can actually get the system put together. So I've separated all the screws. It's actually surprising how many screws come with this case because of all of the um, bays I mentioned. But yeah, I've got everything in this ice cube tray now. So that is good. Uh, another thing that's baffling me is I've got this IO shield that came with the motherboard. The motherboard has been in someone's system as per the eBay listing, but this IO shield has never been taken out of the packet. So that's also weird. Um, whether they just built without it, I do not know, but another mystery. I feel that sometimes I dissect my used component sales. Um, I've got a sneaky feeling that there's a potential that not everybody would kind of want to know the story behind each and every little individual thing. Um, but I just get truly fascinated by people's habits, when it, especially when it comes to tech. Um, yeah, actually, pretty much only when it comes to tech. I've got no real care for what people do outside of that. <laughs> but... Um, if I'm buying hardware off you, I like to know a little bit of where it's been. I think that's only normal. Okay, so getting this IO shield in place. It's not the nicest IO shield. Let's get that back corner in. There we go. That is in. Okay, so I've got the motherboard balanced on top of the case. Not the best idea. One really nice thing is we've got our kind of guide standoff here for the middle one. So we can just plop her in. There we go. Lovely, lovely stuff. That wasn't actually as easy as I thought it was going to be. I usually lie the case down, but I've got a nice little angle here, so uh, I didn't do that this time. I'm just going to get one or two screws in so that we can check the IO shield at the back because it's got all of those tabs. I just want to check nothing is poking in where it shouldn't be. Get a little screw in down here as well. Just two will do this trick while we inspect the IO shield. Yeah, from what I can see, we are looking okay. IO shield is installed correctly and all the tabs look where they should be. So that is good. Let's get the rest of this board screwed in. Here's a closer little look at the action. 
I just love the way that the M80X cases hug these boards. Look at that. That's in there, lovely. Once we get uh, something different going on with our cooler and the white RAM, we'll have a couple of white accents on the board as well, as well as the white on the GPU. So that will tie in really nicely. But there we go. There's a fully screwed in motherboard looking lovely. So I think what we can do now is plug in the bare basics and put in the graphics card and then power her up. It is really that simple. When you've got no drives and no uh, other bits and pieces going into the case, building to this stage is very, very easy. Um, in the year 2023, there's hardly anything that goes into your PC. It's crazy. But of course, it is gonna get a lot harder when we uh, do our custom loop. So that is something to look forward to. This is gonna be really rough because I'm gonna do this in a way that we don't even need to put the back side panel on. Um, and the reason for that is because we're gonna be taking it on and off, on and off. There's no point. It doesn't need to go on yet. All of these cables are gonna come in, out, in, out. So we may as well just throw them in any kind of way right now. Um, it'll still look neat from the front, obviously, because we've got really nice cable uh, loops and holes and stuff with this case. Um, it's strange that this cable doesn't want to seat around the other way, but I guess that's what cable management is for. So yeah, we're not going to worry about any cable management at the moment. Let's get our little CPU cable through this very generous cutout at the top. Really handy. You know, looking at that right now, I think what I'm going to do um, just for the visuals of this build, I'm going to get some custom cables for these. Uh, it's a small case and it'll be really annoying bulk to deal with, but I think I want these to be pink. I think that'll look sick. So the white cables are nice. This one is absolutely fine. The thing is with the 24 pin, it looks okay, um, but it's not one of those nice flat ones. And we've got this kind of collar on the cable here holding the sleeving here and then where it separates out to the individual wires. And this has got like a yellowish tinge to the white. So the whole build is like ice white and this has got a yellowish tinge to it. So that's really nitpicking, but I think pink cables will look gorgeous. Let's bring through some of our smaller cables uh, into the correct place. First one I've got my hands on here is the HD audio. So let's bring that one up. Again, just perfect design here with the holes in the exact right places to make everything super neat. Let's get this uh, chunky monkey through here for the USB, uh, USB 3 or I guess USB 3.2, as it's labeled now. I'll tell you what, that is quite the chunk to get through there, isn't it? And bend in that radius. Might actually be better coming from elsewhere. Uh, but I guess if you can get the slack down into there, mm, I don't know, mind. That is, that's a nasty one. Yeah, that's, that's not nice. I'd rather that coming from somewhere else. That's bending like mad. Mm, I guess there's not a lot we can do about that. Um, We'll leave it like that for now. Here's our little power button coming up through the same hole. Much more pleasant cable to deal with. Power LED is here. And I'll show you guys my little tactic for doing these because they're so small. I basically use the magnifier on my phone from a distance and then you can just plug them right in. Okay, there's that one. Uh, I need to find our power LED. One slightly strange thing, I can't find a power LED um, header or cable. There's no reset switch, so that's that out of the way. I can't see a hard drive activity LED, so that's out of the way. What I do have is a SATA power connector. Now this is for the built-in RGB controller, I believe, um, but it may be the case that we get our power LED uh, illumination from here as well, possibly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a SATA PSU harness out. We'll connect that because we're gonna need auxiliary power in here anyway. Um, we'll may, we may as well have SATA. Again, it's another thing that adds a little bit of bulk, but we're gonna need to power our pump and our additional uh, lighting and fans and stuff. So we're gonna need some juice. So there's no harm in this whatsoever. So yeah, that's basically all we've got coming from there, guys. We've got our chonky USB, uh, the USB 3s, or the USB 3.2s, I should say. Then we've got our HD audio, and then we've just got two thin cables. One of them is the power button, and the other one is this SATA power connector. So let's connect this to our SATA power. And I tell you what we might be able to do. I did say about not putting the side panel back on, but I forgot that we had all this space here for now. So we could just like squidge everything in there, 
put the side panel on and then we'll have a fully functioning PC, presumably, hopefully, um, until we get our cooling upgrades. So this gives us four SATA power connectors, a little bit more than we need probably, but that's fine. There we go, that's plugged in. So now we can connect our SATA power. I have to say it's a bit odd using that connector without a uh, drive, you know, <laughs> still again showing my age, but it would be all Molex stuff for auxiliary power back in the day. So um, that is actually quite nice though. That's, that's as firm as a Molex, maybe even a bit firmer. I never did like Molex anyway, so that's cool. We've got some fans. I don't think we have enough fan headers on this motherboard to power up all the fans, but shall we daisy chain some of them? We've got three pin fan and RGB coming out for each. Let's deal with our three pin fan for now. If we take these cables out into the motherboard area and the same with our uh, rear fan, we'll at least get all the fans running. And then we may be able to daisy chain this RGB off the controller here. In fact, I think that's exactly what we'll do, to be perfectly honest. What have we got here? That is our fan juice as well, so let's get that one out there. I don't really care where things go at the moment. Okay, let's flip her around. So looking for fan headers, we have got, let's see, CPU is plugged in there, that's cool. So we've got a sys fan header here. We'll use that for the back fan then. And just get that gracefully placed down here. Okay, there's that one sorted. Uh, we'll make it prettier than that, don't worry. And then we've got another system fan header down here. We'll use this one and we'll daisy chain uh, these two front ones for now. Boink. And then this one can run off this one. That is cool. I'm not going to worry about that cabling. That doesn't matter. While we're here, we will pull through the GPU power. There we go, there's some juice for the GPU. I tell you what, we may as well just put the GPU in. We may as well. Uh, then let's have a look. These two slots, the middle two, from what I can see, yes. Let's give a, a little bit of assistance on these thumb screws for us. Man, this is gonna be such a sweet looking build. I cannot wait. I wanna see how well the graphics card white matches the rest of the white. That is a big priority for me at the moment. Here's our lovely 1660 Ti OC. Okay, sweet. Card is actually a fair bit closer to the bottom of the case than I have pictured it, but that is because I am used to the mid-tower full size, um, full normal ATX, not micro ATX cases. In fact, I've built in micro ATX cases uh, on the channel twice before but I have not had a GPU in those builds so yeah there's not a lot of room under here if you were to put a little 1x card in here for something you wouldn't even be able to see it because you haven't got that additional uh, three slots of space that you've got on ATX okay there's our graphics card in let's just check if we are completely straight so I believe our GPU is straight but this bottom PCI slot cover is drooped a little bit so we are gonna release that and just lift it up a shade if it'll go up. Okay, there we go. We've got it a tiny bit straighter, but it just, it is forcing the slot down on that bottom one. That's okay though. That is pretty good. It's just being fussy at that point. So let's go for our eight pin connection. Lovely. That is our power for the GPU. And with that, we are all connected except for RGB. So let's plug some of that in. And as well, guys, what I'm thinking is we may as well connect the RGB cable for the power supply. Here's the little power supply RGB cable. And uh, why not? That way our case RGB controller will control the power supply as well. Um, whether I buy a standalone controller, I'm not sure. I may use the motherboard header and then get one of those splitters. That could well be what I end up doing, um, but we will see. So all I'm doing here is we've got this RGB header on the case. Let me get you a better view. There we go. So hiding under this cover, there's our RGB connection. And what we can do, because each fan has a splitter for the RGB and for the fan power, um, we can just daisy chain 
we can just daisy chain through on the RGB, which is great. So if we connect all of these and then connect one master one to the um, controller. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Some of these have got these plastic covers, these rubber covers. Some of them haven't. Apologies if that was out of frame, guys. There we go. I'm just going to make one giant daisy chain out of all of this. Ah, oh, that won't actually connect. That could be a different, different connector. Uh, connector looks the same, but we... What's this all about then? Okay, I just got ultra confused between my cable genders here for a second and uh, thought I wouldn't be able to connect my power supply RGB, but I believe I can. I'm just getting confused. Everything with this build has been super smooth tonight, um, but I can't get the RGB connector into the power supply. So this is the most unnecessary thing, but I'm gonna just slide the power supply out so that I can take a look at that connector rather than just trying to jam it in because um, I've learned tonight that the connectors aren't the most pleasant. So let's try and not mess anything up. <laughs> Guys, there's an entirely different cable. These connectors aren't even similar. There's this other cable that's got to plug in and then bang, that's like your adapter for the more standard RGB, uh, ARGB connector, possibly that's called, I'm not sure. So yeah, I needed another cable, <laughs> yet another cable in the mix for this build. So that's fine. I'm glad I didn't force that in because it's completely not the right cable. Power supply is screwed in. Now I don't like the daisy chain um, with all of these connectors. I mean, it's cool that you can do it, but we want something much cleaner for the final build. So I think I will look into a hub or splitter or whatever. Okay, let's cram some of this back here. Lovely. And you know what? I'm just gonna squeeze the back panel on now because I'm confident that everything is gonna work. <laughs> Again, temporary build. We would do something a lot nicer with the cables usually, but for the sake of this, we're just squeezing it all in. And in fact, it's not even a squeeze because that was fine. Okay, man, I'm getting tired now. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off one of my filming lights. Um, because we want to see this start up, we're just going to connect two cables. We're going to connect HDMI and we're going to connect power. Tripping over my words like mad here. Okay, there's the HDMI. Where's my handy little power cable that was lurking here? Aha, here it is. So we're plugged in. This is pretty damn exciting. Okay, let's flip the power switch. And moment of truth, let's press that power button. Three, two, one, go. Hello, computer. I was pressing the RGB button. <laughs> Pressed totally the wrong button, man. Oh, what the hell? Sweet, we've got a picture. So we've got system on, yeah, I was pressing this button. So this is, yeah, for the RGB. So here's kind of like a closer look at the system. Um, the reason we don't have a power LED is as I suspected, it's powered off the RGB hub. So as you can see, it follows the color of the fans internally, which is really nice. Um, a one-up to Corsair, you can't actually tell this on the camera very well, but their white is much more white than this white. This is the very pinky white. This is the more bluey white. Um, if you're into solid white, then RGB can be a bit hit and miss for that. Luckily, we're gonna be going mainly pink, maybe like a pink white gradient. Um, we're gonna have to get this running off the board or running off some kind of controller to give us control. I can't believe I'm spending the first moments of this system being powered up speaking about RGB. <laughs> I really can't, uh, but yeah, we're up and running, check it out. Uh, I think I'm gonna get the other side panel and just bung it on because really we can tell everything's working. We've got video, we've got all our fans. If there are any small hiccups, then they're gonna be minor. So um, I'm quite confident to put this side panel back on for now as well. Let's just rip this off. Nice. 
side panel window on. Ooh. Lovely full window there. Looks great. Man, this system is silent as well. I mean, obviously the, fa the fans aren't spinning incredibly, uh, incredibly fast or anything, but wow. <laughs> Look at it. So clean. Obviously, cable management leaves a lot to be desired uh, with the things flapping about all over the place here, but we can sort all of that sort of thing. We can make it look really, really nice. All of what you just saw was in the past. That was past Tom putting together that system back in the summer of 2023. It is now November 2023. The plan for this video was to make a huge sort of three hour epic and do the system start to finish. No multiple parts, no stopping, just right the way through. Huge video feature length PC build. Um, but unfortunately that has not happened. And the main reason for that is because I have not got these water cooling parts. Every time I've kind of filled my basket full of these water cooling parts, something has gone wrong. So we've had car trouble, then we had tumble dryer trouble, then we had car trouble again. And that kind of spare little pot that I've been building up has just been going down, down, building up, down again, built up, down again. And I know with Christmas coming up, we are just not going to be able to water cool this system before Christmas simply because buying the components is just a little bit out of reach at the moment. So instead of just letting this video rot away, um, and get less and less relevant. I'm going to stick this part up for you guys and then what we're going to do in the new year we are going to water cool the system and that is going to be a lovely part too and of course it's not going to be just an average water cooling loop we're going to put a little twist in there I've got some got some nice ideas so hopefully we can make it quite interesting. Um, I want to address one little thing and this video is not quite over yet it's going to get a lot more exciting and give a little bit more of a cliffhanger I think. Um, so you may be thinking, okay, cool, water cooling, good fun, but a little bit pointless for just a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU that really performs super well with just its stock air cooler. Why go to all the expense of water cooling it? It's a lot of effort. Um, and you're absolutely right. I was going to do it just for fun to begin with, but then my mind started kind of racing away and I was thinking, hmm, it would be really nice if we could also liquid cool the GPU. Now the 1660 Ti that we purchased is a lovely card, it's been working great. I've had the system built for months now, um, I haven't had a huge amount of time to play on it but my kids have played on it a fair bit and uh, yeah it's been working really well. That's a nice card. Um, but being a 1660 Ti and the version that it is, it's very unlikely that we're going to find a water block that is going to function with it nicely. Um, it's, it's, it's just very unlikely because the card just does not require liquid cooling. So I started having a little browse on eBay and I was looking for a few weeks and I came across a lovely deal that I picked up just a couple of weeks ago and I am very excited to show it to you guys. So I'm going to flip the camera around and let's take a look at what's on the table. First of all, before I show you what's over there, I'm going to show you this. We have bought an AMD Radeon RX 5700 and that in itself is very exciting because I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm a particular fan of all AMD systems. The first ever system that I built on the channel back in the day was all AMD and ever since then I've just had a soft spot for all AMD. I love Nvidia, I love Intel but just AMD CPU and GPU is a lovely combination. So this isn't really an upgrade to a 1660 Ti, this is kind of a sidestep. 5700 is a lovely performing card um, but that's not really what we're here to talk about. Yes I do have a 5700 but there's a little bit of a twist. This box is empty, there's no GPU in here, although it is very heavy because, <laughs> hint hint, the factory cooler here is in the box. So let's take a little look at what we've got. Here it is. <laughs> oh man, I still can't believe I took the plunge and bought this. This was 150 quid and to me that is a steal. We've essentially got a free water block. So if you want to buy yourselves a 5700, it'll cost less than 150 quid on eBay. But the value of this block is quite high. This is a nice block from Thermaltake. It's got RGB and it came with its little control box and all the cables and stuff that we can hook up. This is a 5700 with water block already applied on the card. And check it out. The card is much bigger than the 1660 Ti. It looks gorgeous. And we're going to be able to liquid cool both the CPU and the GPU now. And we end up with an all AMD system, which is really cool. 
5700, nice card. But it does get even better. Winding back a few years to when these cards came out, a lot of you probably remember that it was pretty much a common knowledge thing and a, a definitely something that people were doing um, in true AMD GPU style. You could flash these 5700s to become essentially 5700 XTs. So you would gain a, a decent amount of performance more out of your 5700. With the slight trade-off that the card ran hotter, you'd be looking at obviously a louder experience, especially with more of a reference cooler design, like this blower cooler on the FX, F, X, FX card that we've got here. Um, but that's not a problem for us. So this card has been flashed already. The seller flashed it. He's been running it as a 5700 XT for, you know, I guess a couple of years or whatever. His description was very good. Um, so that's why I'm confident with the purchase and I know the card's going to work because it was just great. There was, I think there were screenshots and everything on there. So it was just really good. Lots of information, nice deal, well packaged, seemed like a great seller. And yeah, he flashed this card to run as a 5700 XT. Doesn't run well with the air cooler. It's loud and it's hot, but with this water block and a nice liquid cooling loop, we are going to get lovely temperatures out of this guy and squeeze as much performance as possible out of this 5700. And we didn't need to pay 5700 XT prices. And we essentially got a free water block, give or take, depending on how high you value a 5700. So yeah, that is quite exciting. It means that when we return in the new year to water cool this system, we'll be doing a full loop for both CPU and GPU in this tiny case, which is going to be great fun. Lastly, just so I don't leave too much kind of hanging over you guys, I'm going to tell you my plan for the other components because I kind of suggested that there was something else going on. And now that we've got an available 1660 Ti, because we'll be removing that from the system to replace it with this G GPU, of course, I have a motherboard, uh, the GPU and the memory that's in the system because I want to buy uh, white memory that's slightly faster for this system and we'll do that next time as well. Uh, all I need to find is a nice little good used deal on a Ryzen CPU and then we've got a full other little gaming system. So we're going to piece together a second gaming system, probably another MATX system, um, but with a slightly cheaper case probably. And then we're going to flog that and hopefully recoup some of the money that we spent on this project. And that'll allow somebody else to enjoy those nice parts as a, a sort of nice entry level uh, gaming PC. So that's another bonus build that we'll have on the channel. It's not going to be as exciting as this one, but it's going to use up those components nicely. And I'm going to try and get that done fairly quickly because it is important to remember as well that as time rolls on, when you have these things sitting on the shelf for a little while, the components are getting older and older and then the new generation of GPUs and stuff are coming out and then suddenly this stuff doesn't perform as well in the games as it once did when you originally thought of the idea because that's how long it takes me to do this stuff these days. So we're going to try and pull it out of the bag. Um, but yeah, the main thing that's going to be exciting is finishing this system. So expect a lovely big part two. Thank you so much for getting this far watching all this uh, this video. I know it's been a long one. It was going to be even longer, but yeah, now we have another video to look forward to entirely. So thank you so much, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.